you, you mentioned that you worked at Decode, right? In the back back in the back in the day. And Decode, for for those of you who are not familiar with Decode, Decode, I, I do believe it was purchased by Amgen at some point in time, exactly. um, right? But they were really at the forefront of genomics, like they were doing crazy stuff before anyone thought it was possible. So maybe maybe as a fellow genomics enthusiast, like walk us through like like what were what were those times like? Because you were re- you were absolutely at the bleeding edge at that point in time. Like how did Absolutely. it feel to be a part of that? Yeah, well, Lester, you know, so exciting. And I remember when I went for the interview, um, I was living in London, went, uh, you know, flew to Reykjavik for the interview um, with, um, you know, the leadership at um, Deco Genetics. And I remember when they told me, they, they say, okay, now we're going to visit the factory. They didn't say the lab, the factory. And the factory is where they had all these PCR machines and Sanger sequencing to do the microsatellites. It was really like a factory. It was, I've never seen that many PCR machines in one room. It was like science fiction for me. And I was in the world of genomics coming from well-equipped and well-funded labs in Europe. But seeing that again was like science fiction. And then uh, let's visit the biobank and the biobank. Oh my goodness. The biobank was you know, security was um, with, um, you know, I, uh, it is, uh, Iris, or anyway, it was uh, like super secure. And then it was uh, all, um, uh, you know, managed with a robot, like a um, robot hand that will, you know, I mean, you will enter in the system at the time, you know, that was the year 2000. So uh, 2001 to 2005, I was there. So early days, uh, the human genome was not sequenced yet fully sequenced or anything so you will just enter a system in your computer and say i want uh, you know a 96 well plate with samples from that many diabetic patients with that many controls or whatever i need this and the robot will go and look for those samples and prepare your plates that was again science fiction i was like oh my goodness so it was and there were, and still, even though there were, you're right, they were purchased by Amgen, they still function in a way as an independent entity. So they still, when they publish, when Carrie Stephenson, the CEO, published and the team at Decode, they still publish as Decode, and they continue doing all kinds of association studies, all kinds of large genomic studies. Actually, they did now, the, large, the last super large project they did was to sequence, they were one of the two sequencer uh, or centers that sequenced the um, 500,000 uh, samples from the UK Biobank, which is a huge project in collaboration with the pharma comp- with several pharma companies, Amgen, one of them, of course, but then Decod was the one that generated the sequencing data and that, um, you know, of course, is mining and analyzing and cranking all this data. So yeah, it's, it's quite, I will say, you know, that, that when I put that in perspective, it was a bold move. My partner actually was the one pushing me to go there. I was like, Reykjavik, like from all places <laughs> on earth, would I go to work? You know, I'm Colombian, I'm a tropical woman. Would I go to the North Pole in my mind? This is the North Pole, the North Pole to work in genetics. And we ended up loving the country. And now it's like, you know, everybody wants to go to Iceland and see the volcanoes, see the glaciers, see the amazing, um, you know, outdoors landscapes and everything. Um, But that, exactly, that ball movement really, it was a wild card and a ball movement that after that opened so many doors. It was like a, you know, presentation card. Like when I went to Eli Lilly, I think Eli Lilly hired me because of my decode experience, not because of, you know, any PhD in Belgium or any, you know, (laughs) masters in France or anything.